Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to set up NetPlay on your Raspberry Pi. Now me and Drew Talks actually went over this and we tested it out. I have some footage at the end of this video. He also has a video up on his channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely go check it out. So NetPlay is relatively easy to set up on the Raspberry Pi. We were using the new Raspberry Pi 3B Plus because the Ethernet is a lot faster and the Wi-Fi. We were both connected through Ethernet, and I definitely suggest using Ethernet over Wi-Fi, but you can always test it out using wireless if you want. Now, there's a few things we need to know before we get started here with NetPlay. Not all emulators are going to work. It has to be a RetroArch core, and even then, not all of the RetroArch cores are supported. This is really awesome for NES, SNES, Neo Geo, and things like that. It does work on the Pi, but if you really want to get NetPlay up and running, I suggest using a PC with RetroArch. There are a few emulators that work really well on the Pi itself, and I'll show you those at the end here. But let's go ahead and get into this. It's really easy to set up. First thing we're going to need to do is plug in our Ethernet or connect to Wi-Fi. Then we're going to go in here to the RetroPie menu, and we're going to find RetroArch NetPlay. We're going to enter this menu. Here's the settings we need to go over. At the very top of this gray box here, you will see an internal IP and an external IP. Your external IP is the IP address that your friend will be connecting to. I do not recommend broadcasting this out to the world because there are certain people out there that can do things with your external IP. I don't have anything listed here. I only give my external IP out to people I trust. It's just how I do it. Now I was running as the host so somebody could connect to me. So the very first option, set mode, host or client. I'm on H for host. If you want to join somebody, you're going to set client. Set port. Currently 55435. You will need to give your friend this port here. It's usually 55435, but make sure. Set host IP address for client mode. So when we're in client mode, we're going to have to put in the external IP located at the top here of the friend you want to connect with to play online with. He's going to have to give you that. You will have to input it here. I suggest using a keyboard to do that. Finally, set your NetPlay nickname. Mine's ETA Prime. You can pretty much put anything in here. Save configuration. And we're going to exit. Now, like I mentioned, not all emulators are supported with NetPlay, and some of them work better than others. So, for example, me and Drew Talks tried to use SNES 9X 2010. It was super slow. The best one we could come up with was SNES 9X 2005. It worked a lot better, but it wasn't perfect. So now that we have our friend's external IP address, you will need the same exact ROM and the same core. So let's say we want to play Super Nintendo with a friend across the world. We're going to go into Super Nintendo. We need to make sure we have the same exact ROM. The MD5 checksum needs to match. If you've downloaded packs, more than likely you have the same ROM set but you definitely need to make sure it is the same exact one. I'm just gonna search for Joe Mac. I know it's a two player simultaneous game. We did test this one out. As soon as I'm ready to start this, I'm gonna start the game. I'm gonna tap A to get into my launching menu. From here, you need to make sure you have the same default emulator set as your friend. We were using LR SNES 9X 2005. It just seemed to work a lot better than 2010. We're going to scroll all the way down, launch with NetPlay enabled. Your friend will also have to do this. So I'm going to launch this with NetPlay enabled. I am now broadcasting this game. Your friend needs to do the exact same thing. As long as he or she has your external IP in there correctly, you should be able to connect. It'll tell you in the bottom left hand corner that so and so has connected to you and you can start playing. So I just moved over to my PC to show you some of this documentation here. This is located over at the RetroPie GitHub. You both need to be running the same version of RetroArch. You both need to be running the same emulator and you both need to have the same exact ROM. Everything you need to know is located here. I'll leave a link in the description. And there's one more link I'm going to leave, which is the NetPlay getting started. It tells you a lot about it with RetroArch. Which cores work for NetPlay? On a technical level, every core that supports save state should work. But the requirements are a little different. 
Does PlayStation 1, N64, Dreamcast, GameCube, Wii, 3DS NetPlay work? No, the performance requirements make the current model unsuitable for those. Can I play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, PSP, 3DS? No, RetroArch's NetPlay is not link cable emulation. So those are kind of out of the question. Mainly, I use this to play some arcade games using FBA. I like to do a lot of NES and SNES two-player stuff online. It's just a really cool feature that they've built into RetroArch. And to know it works with the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie is a big plus. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I wouldn't go broadcasting my external IP to everybody in the world, but I'm sure you might have some friends that you can trust with it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There's also both of these documents you can read over. Everything you need to know is in both of these. I'm going to leave you with some net play footage that me and Drew Talks actually recorded last night. We've played for about two hours. We tested a lot of stuff. Some stuff works great. Some stuff is just a little too laggy to play. And it's not the internet connection here. It's the power of the Pi. This all works on pretty much save states. So the Pi is really struggling with some of these emulators. If you haven't heard of Drew Talks, definitely go check out his channel. Links at the top of the description. He does a lot of great stuff with retro gaming, Raspberry Pi, and PC. Definitely worth a watch. The graphics seem really good in this. Yeah, I this is my favorite Metal Slug. I know it, it ran really horrible in the arcade. Like, you see the lag here? That's how it ran in the arcade. You can actually overclock this core. But I leave it like this, man. I mean, it's fine. I got a little bit of lag here and there. It's not the Pi doing it. Yeah. It's this ROM. Have you gone to the uh, little secret monkey sewer? There's a monkey sewer? Well, you go, you go down there and there's... Um, I'll show you in a sec. We'll go down there. There's a little On that? spot. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. Little birdie? This one's running pretty decent, man. I do notice a little bit of lag, but... Yeah, <laughs> it's a little choppy. It's kind of worth it, though, for the two players. Right here. Come right here where I oh, am. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. And press down. And you'll crawl down here. Uh. There's another one. If you let them shoot you, you can turn into a monkey and just kill everybody, dude. Like, it's worth you getting just kill hit. We kill them. So I just got hit. Another one? Oh, there you go. I get a machine gun, dude, and check it out. Dude, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody's like, no, don't get hit. I'm like, dude, yes, I want to get hit. I want to be the monkey. I just got sliced open. You want to do the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's the start. NES port of it, which wasn't bad. It did have, you know, horrible gra graphics compared, but the gameplay was decent. Nice, let's do it. And I did test this with somebody else. It should work perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we uh, do any teamwork? Uh, in this one, I don't know. I don't think it was implemented in this, but the... Arcade the, we could. Yeah. That was a few other little changes they had. I think the only teamwork we can do is if one of those foot soldiers is hugging on you, I can hit him. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Oh, so we'll go with 2005 and see what happens. Yep. Launch with Netplay. Give it a second. All right, try to join up here. All right, load in. There we go. Joined. Turbo all the way. Seems like it's running better. Let's see what happens when we get in here. Um, okay. I was going to choose Chen Li again, but... Oh, four stars. Look at you, cheater. Oh, come on now. I, I meant to go to four stars. I'm going to just take it on up. No. <laughs> All right. Oh. I don't know, man. This is running a lot better. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's still not.
there. A lot better, though. Can't even pull off a Haruken. There we go. There you go. So as you can see, some of those emulators did work pretty well. Some of them were a little laggy here and there. The sound was definitely off on a few of these. But I think it's still a lot of fun to get up with somebody across the country or even across the world, play your favorite retro games on your Raspberry Pi. Now if you're really interested in doing net play and having it work almost perfectly, definitely try it on PC using RetroArch. I have my launch box set up using mostly RetroArch as the cores or the emulators. And I also have Netplay set up, so all I have to do is add somebody, we can start playing immediately. Netplay performance on a PC is 100 times better than the Raspberry Pi, really due to the processing power that we have and the read and write speeds of our hard drives in a PC. This works on save states to get Netplay up and running, so we're constantly reading and writing from the SD card on a Raspberry Pi. On our PC, we're using either an SSD or a hard drive, which is a lot faster. So it does work much better on PC, but if this is the option you have, it's definitely worth a try. And you just need to experiment with those cores. Some are going to work better than others. We probably could have went through some different NES cores and maybe even a different FBA core. But we chose pretty much the stock setup just to see how it performed. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. I've actually tried to get this video made for a long time, but a lot of people's schedules just don't link up. So I want to give a big shout out to Drew Talks for taking the time to help me out here. If you guys could, go check his channel out. Links at the top of the description and on screen now. Like always, thanks for watching.